Now we come to another very important uh, uh, quality or the characteristic of uh, these uh, synchronous generators. That is by controlling the field excitation, the field current, uh, the, the DC current that is exciting this field, uh, we can control the reactive power these uh, generators supply. So let's first consider this uh, uh, part A where it is uh, operating at unity power factor. So what that implies is that under this condition shown here in figure A, the, the voltage and current, they are in phase, okay? So that's what is shown, the voltage uh, across the terminal and, uh, and let's forget about the resistance here, just the reactance uh, in, a, in our per phase equivalent circuit. The current coming out, uh, you know, represented by a phaser, they are both in phase here, okay? So you can see here that if this is the case, then uh, using this uh, per phase equivalent circuit, uh, VA plus this uh, drop across the synchronous reactance uh, it will give us the the field flux. I'm sorry, the 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 voltage uh, induced in phase A due to the the field current as well as the armature reaction. There, so that's uh, EAF here. All right. Now, <clears throat> so this is a unity power factor operation. But what if we want this synchronous generator to supply reactive power, supply wars, okay? What we'll do is we'll go into what is called over excitation. That is, we will supply more current, field current than before. We will over excite the field here, okay? So IF compared to unity power factor operation has gone up here, okay? So if you do that, then uh, the amplitude of this EAF phaser has to increase. We saw that that was proportional to the field flux. <coughs> so if that has gone up because of IF has gone up, uh, gone up, so this EAF would uh, go up as well. And let's say VA is the same, and EAF has gone up. And so uh, in that case, IA would turn out to be at this uh, phase angle over here. Because, uh, and it's the same power that is coming in here. So the power is constant, okay? Power is constant. But uh, by over exciting the field, uh, what we have done is we have shifted the phase angle of IA. But if you look at the, the real component of IA in, in phase with VA, that has not changed. That's the same as before here, okay? So this part here, which I just, uh, you know, highlighted with red, so that component of IA has not changed. But now IA is uh, in the position as shown here, which has a reactive component, IAQ, and the reactive power that is supplied by this uh, synchronous generator is uh, VA amplitude, IAQ, this component, times three for three phase over here. So by, uh, at the same power, this, the real power supplied by this generator has not changed, but by changing the excitation, by increasing it, uh, we are making this uh, uh, generator supply reactive power like capacitors would supply reactive power to the electrical grid, okay? So now, in the same manner, we can actually go into under excitation. Let me change the color here of this ink to green. So this is called under excited or under excitation. Okay, and here IF, we actually decrease compared to unity power factor operation. Okay, and uh, that is shown over here. And uh, if you do that, again, keeping this power constant, then EAF would be smaller in magnitude as compared to EAF over here at unity power factor operation. And uh, this IA vector would show up over here. And again, if you take the projection of this IA vector along VA 
here. This part is the same as uh, what we had over here, okay? So this length is the same here, same here, and same here, okay, for, uh, for the real part. But now uh, we also have a reactive component, but this is uh, now, you know, in a different uh, d direction, so to speak. And uh, so we can s see here that in this case, uh, the machine is operating uh, to absorb reactive power from the grid as, as inductors would. So that's what happens under, under excited condition. Okay, so that's a very important uh, characteristic of uh, these machines that we can control the reactive power supplied or absorbed by these machines here. So uh, quite often, you know, uh, these synchronous machines can operate as uh, almost capacitors. They are called synchronous condensers where the real power transfer is essentially zero in steady state anyway. And uh, we can make them supply or absorb reactive power, but because of the inertia of these machines, they, have, they are able to supply some real power in, uh, uh, under dynamic conditions, so they have quite often better characteristics than having just capacitors or inductors connected to the grid here. And then uh, uh, this capability uh, of uh, controlling the reactive power by adjusting the field current can uh, be used for this automatic voltage regulation. So we can put this in a feedback loop. So we can, wherever at some bus we want to keep the voltage constant, we can measure the, the voltage there and then uh, compare it with some reference value and then control the current that goes into this field winding to control this output voltage by this feedback control. So that is called automatic uh, voltage regulation, okay? Now, <clears throat> the, the last thing we will look at is how should we model these uh, synchronous generators for different types of studies? And what are the different types of reactants? So that's what we'll see here. In steady state, we saw that we had this reactants X sub S. That's called the synchronous reactants because in steady state, we have field flux as well as through this field flux, uh, the armature reaction flux can go through that, okay? But, uh, you know, if you consider that uh, the field winding is supplied by some voltage source, okay? So under transient condition, this... Uh, uh, this voltage source really appears like short circuit, and uh, if you apply this, uh, you know, model, constant flux model over here, uh, what that implies is that the flux linkage of a short circuited coil, which this field winding appears to be, uh, this flux cannot change. So if uh, there's a short circuit on the AC side of the machine, and the, you know, the currents in the phase windings increase as uh, is showing in this plot over here, uh, what happens is that uh, the, the field current all, you know, immediately increases to maintain the flux, uh, th linking this uh, field winding to be uh, constant, okay? And uh, this uh, additional flux coming from uh, increased uh, phase currents uh, spills over into the air gap due to the damper windings and so forth. So we get what is called a subtransient reactance, which could be four to seven times smaller than the synchronous reactance. And then this uh, transient reactance, which uh, after the damper winding currents have died out, uh, it is, this can be twice as large as the subtransient reactance. So uh, knowing that uh, depending upon what type of study we are doing, uh, whether we are in subtransient domain or transient domain or steady state domain, we can take care of all these by this simple uh, constant flux model. And uh, there is a lot to be described here, and I'll uh, uh, refer you to the source four here. But uh, we can take care of all, them, all of them by this simple uh, equivalent circuit here and this phasor diagram. 
So at the terminal in steady state, let's say you have this voltage Ea, and the current coming out is Ia over here. And uh, uh, this is modeled through this, uh, using this uh, synchronous reactance, the X of S, and the voltage drop across it, and the back EMF here is EAF, right this here, okay? For the same, uh, so this machine is running in uh, steady state with uh, these three, uh, th these quantities that I have shown in, uh, in this color here. But let's say that, uh, you know, we have to represent this under uh, uh, fault conditions and the, maybe you're using uh, right after the fault and therefore you want to use uh, transient reactants. So if you want to do that, then let's ch let me change the color here to, to red. Uh, you know, prior to fault, we have Ea and Ia, but in order to represent this machine uh, for use uh, for this uh, fault calculation program, uh, what we'll do is that with this Ea and Ia, uh, we'll represent this machine with this subtransient reactance here. X sub S double prime, and uh, the back EMF is EAF double prime. So you see here that, uh, <coughs> uh, you know, EA and IA, they are the same. But under steady state condition, due to the synchronous reactance X sub S and the drop across it, we are representing the machine using EAF, okay? And uh, uh, under uh, subtransient condition due to excess double prime uh, here, uh, we have uh, for the same uh, terminal voltage and terminal current, uh, we are representing the back EMF here with this EAF double prime. And you know what I have not mentioned here in the middle is uh, this uh, transient condition here where we are using the transient reactants, X of S prime rather than X of S double prime. So this pretty much completes the, the discussion of uh, synchronous generators. Uh, you know, it's a, this can be a huge topic, but uh, we have tried to sort of give an overview here by showing the importance of uh, uh, synchronous generators, what the structure may look like, and then what is the operating principle on which uh, uh, these machines can produce uh, uh, voltages and currents and torque and what the equivalent circuit would be like, and uh, what is the steady state stability limit, and uh, how we can control the, the field excitation in order to adjust the reactive power that is delivered or absorbed by these machines, and uh, we can operate them as synchronous condensers, and then this automatic voltage regulation and modeling for various studies. So thank you very much.